When you are on the go, you need your credit union to be right there with you. Hughes Federal Credit Union makes your life easier. For 60 years, Hughes has called Southern Arizona home and has given back to our community. Isn't that who you want as your financial partner? Welcome to Greg Hansen's Video Notebook, brought to you by Hughes Federal Credit Union. I'm Star Sports Editor Ryan Finley here with Greg Hansen. GH over under on how many fans are in the stands Saturday night when the Arizona Wildcats take on the Oregon State Beavers in Corvallis. Go. Smallest crowd ever Arizona's played in front of since they joined the Pac-12, 10, mm -hmm. 8,000. Okay. At Oregon State in the mid-80s on a rainy afternoon. Right. I was there. This will be a rainy evening, or at least a cold evening. For, for both of these teams, neither of whom is considered uh, very good. Um, for they're, they're not in the playoffs. <laughs> for Arizona, though, and you hate to look at it this way, this is the best chance they've had to win a football game in two months. Yeah, since Hawaii and Grambling. Yeah. Um, boy, Oregon State is not good. No. They've lost so many players. People say Arizona has lost a lot of players. doesn't compare to how many Oregon State has well, lost. And this week, Oregon State checks Seth Collins, who's their yeah. former quarterback turned wide receiver. He checks in the hospital with meningitis. I mean, this isn't just knees and ankles and stuff. It's, it's life-threatening life things. And there's a reason Oregon State went 0-9 a year ago in the league, because they're not very good. Right. This is a little bit of a tangent, but to me it's fascinating. Gary Anderson, Oregon State's coach, was at Wisconsin. He has since taken the job at Oregon State and has been dreadful. I mean, this is not a team that I think looks even close to being maybe kind of good. He has applied the term through the hard. Right. <laughs> That's his hard edge. Right. Through the hard, it's an Australian rugby term. Okay. So this is hard edge against through the hard, and it's hard to see either team winning this game. Yeah. I mean, it's, to me, you look at Arizona, um, the question is, is twofold. Is can they score enough points? Can they score enough points to make up for a defense that is giving up way too many points? I think it'll be a competitive game with both teams scoring in the 20s. Yeah. Unless it's just a really windy, rainy night. Mm -hmm. um, plus, when you lose as much as Arizona has lost, can you summon something? I think that's what you're saying. If you're Rich Rodriguez, I, th I think that's the pregame speech, which is, you got to get one here, you know, and... And they know the score. They know that on paper, this is as good a chance as they're going to have to win oh. a conference game. But looming in, in the background here is six days later, a game against Arizona State at home. If you're Arizona, I think there's a real fear that this team may check out or, yeah, may, check out. or may have their, their heart set on uh, the following week and not focus on what's going to be a cold, possibly wet, dreary kind of night in Oregon. The possibility exists within 10 days this is the worst season in Arizona football history, 100 years. This year, if Arizona loses both of these games. Wow. It is. Wow. And every year that's even remotely neared it has led to everybody getting fired. Yeah. It's, uh, there is so much theater left in these last two crummy games. Right. Um, very newsworthy stuff. Very newsworthy stuff. And again, we're singing a, a different tune here. If Arizona can somehow beat Oregon State, who's not very good. And then pull something oh. out and beat uh, Sparky Graham in, a in Arizona yeah. State, suddenly you're looking at four and eight. A terrible year that would get a lot of coaches fired, but it feels different. Oh. They, I mean, they could double their win total in the next week. Hey, they, they will carry Rich Rod off the field if they win these two games. Right. He'll be celebrated. Right. He'll go to McHale Center and receive applause. What, what do you think the most likely outcome is the next two weeks? I think Arizona will win one. Yeah? Do you? Yeah. I don't know I don't which know one. Which one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how bad, I don't know how bad these other two teams are because I haven't been able to watch them everywhere. Right. And both of them, like Arizona, have really been hurt by injuries, Arizona State in particular. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. It's, it's very strange. And, you know, Greg, this time of year you hear rumblings and rumors and, and people going, well, yeah, is it possible that Greg Burns had enough? It's possible mm -hmm. that the U of A's had enough? I think that it's way too soon for that sure. kind of talk. What do you think? Too soon. If they lose both games, the talk will escalate. Mm -hmm. But still, who's going to pay $8 million to have Rich Rod depart? Right. And, and who's going to pay $8 million to bring in somebody else? Yeah. And who's, who could that person even be? Phil Knight. I mean, Arizona's a Nike school. Maybe he's getting tired of Arizona losing. Maybe the Tommy Bahama guy can become Arizona's <laughs> Phil Knight. 
He sold Tommy Bahama. Oh, no, no. Maybe he has more money now. That's true. That's true. Joey Rodolfo, where are you? They need your money. Uh, Tommy Bahama, by the way. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Greg Hansen's wardrobe brought to you by. Oh, yeah. Zoom in there, Drew. T Tommy Bahama. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough messing around for us here. That'll do it for this episode of Greg Hansen's Video Notebook, brought to you by Hughes Federal Credit Union. For Greg Hansen, I'm Ryan Finley. We'll see you next time.